Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. This is part of the napkin journal series, but I'm also going to feature the technique of removing paint through a stencil. So this uses the Aquarial Poppy napkin, and you can get the napkin as well as the stencils I use, all from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box and a coupon code. So I am just water cutting some of the poppy elements out. Now I loved this napkin because of the colors and the shape. I'm a big fan of watercoloring. It just called to me, but it's been a struggle to try to figure out how to use it. So today was the day I thought I'm going to cut these out and start playing with them in a composition on a page and figure out where I'm going to go. Now I like the, the green, the greenery that's on here, but for my purposes today, I didn't want that. So I'm just cutting out the poppies and I continue to cut out. At first I think six is gonna be enough and then I end up actually with nine of the poppies, which was three of the quadrants of the napkin. What you I don't use here with the greenery and the smaller flowers. That's just going into my container by my desk and it will show up in some mini make or smaller art journal page. So removing paint through a stencil is one of those techniques that I love the effect, but I have not been overly successful doing it. So today I thought I'm going to really give this a go. Now I'm using Liquitex Basics medium body paint and here I'm using it straight up and I'm applying it to the page. Now the page is gessoed and that's really important. For this to work the best, I recommend having your page gessoed and I also have recommend having your baby wipe fully wet kind of right out of the container and in your hand before you start putting paint down. So here I'm just putting the paint on and then putting the stencil on and wiping it out. This gives kind of a reverse stencil effect where you have less paint where the stenciling would be. And I my plan is to just play with this technique and figure some things out and create a very patterned and textured background. Because I'm pulling paint out with the baby wipe, it's uneven and you're getting some texture on here. Now you're not going to get perfect stenciling. That is not what goes on with this technique. I just want pattern. And I'm pulling the colors or trying to match the colors from the Aquarell Poppy napkin. This stencil is called Garden Gate, and the stencils that I'm picking to remove paint through a stencil, they have wider open spaces, and that's where what's going to show. If you had a really fine stencil, that may not be the best to pair with this technique. The first stencil was called scroll work and it was another one. Now, when you put it down, the stencil down into the wet paint, you're liable to get a lot of paint on that back side of the stencil. You can press it onto your project and get off any kind of marks, kind of stamping with your stencil, or you can wipe it off if there's too much, if you don't want to transfer it on. Now as I go, I realize that it works better if I thin the paint a little bit. So I'm just basically wetting my brush before I dip it into the paint and that works better. And that's what you see happening here. Now the colors that I'm using, I have yellow ochre, I've got orange, I'm mixing that with deep violet, which gives you a nice rose color quinacridone magenta and I'm mixing all of those colors in different ways and applying it on here and I continue using those same colors 
throughout this project. This one is called Linked Tiles. So we have Garden Gate, Linked Tiles, and Scroll Work. And I know throughout the center of this, I'm going to be putting the poppies in some way, shape or form. So I'm not worried about getting perfect texture. Now I'm doing an awful lot of work on this background and I'll continue to doing that. Lots of more layers to come. And in the end, you don't see a lot of the background because the focal image is fairly large. But what peeks through is so layered and so textured and so wonderful. Here I'm adjusting the color of this. This was reading a little more pink or purple than what I liked. And the color here is a little bit off. What's showing up on the screen than what it was in reality. I really like this technique of removing paint through the stencil. Some call it addition by subtraction because you're pulling off. And I hope you all give this a try. Now, this was a lot brighter than what I wanted. I want the poppies to be front and center. So I wanted to knock this back and I thought, okay, I'm gonna grab my sink liner, which is a piece of the sink liner here. And I'm putting on white gesso with a brayer. You could just stamp it into the gesso and just stamping it on. I'm using white because I wanna knock these colors back. I wanna mute them a little bit. And I'm thinking that might work to put some white on there. And I'm just adding one more layer of texture and one more layer of pattern. I'm loving the look, but I continue tweaking it. Now I still wanted to knock it back, so I thought, you know, I have the brayer out. I'm just gonna brayer this on and see if I can mute that background a little bit more. I do want the star of the page to be the poppies. So I'm brayering on. Now again, brayering paint on is imperfect. Didn't quite knock it back enough. So now I'm coming back and I'm doing a wash of that gesso and just wiping it off. And this knocks it back, subdues that those colors in a way that I like. So again, we try one thing, we try another, and every one, everything we do, every step or process adds to the finished piece. Now, of course, if I'm never happy. I wanted a little bit, I wanted more of that texture to show in some areas. So I'm coming back and now I'm just stenciling with those same patterns, adding one more layer. So it's this little bit of a dance between, you know, adding, subtracting, bringing forward, pushing back. But this is all part of the process and having fun. And again, I'm mixing those colors in different ways and that's getting different tones on the page, which makes this all work together. <clears throat> We've got the stenciling by, we've got this pattern by removing the paint. We've got the pattern by direct stenciling. But I'm using the same three stencils. 
Now I'm coming to figure out the composition. And I have my poppies. I cut out a vase. I just kept doodling a shape of a vase till I got something that I liked. And then I just made a template with it. And that's what you see there. Now I'm playing, you know, they say odd numbers. So here I've got six. Five didn't seem to be enough. Six was an odd number and looked weird. So I continue playing with it. So I go and I think, okay, well, what color am I going to put the vase? So I'm just painting this one. I've got some paint out there and I'm thinking, okay, do I want it the pink? Do I want to bring out the pink or do I want to bring out another color or do I want to go with a totally different color or a neutral vase? So I try that, and then I add some gold on it, and I remove this, use the same stencil and remove some of that paint, and it gives a very slight texture. I played around, and then I did the same basic process with the yellow, with a little bit of the pink in it, and then I put gold on top of it. And I like that one best. That, that's just a personal judgment call. And here you can see I've gone out and cut more of those poppies out. So now I'm gluing all the focal image down with my fluid matte medium from Liquitex Basics. Now I took a picture there because I want to remember where the poppies are going to be placed. Now, because this is napkin and you're going to see through it, I want to knock back some of the pattern that's going to be directly underneath those poppies. I don't, I don't mind if there's a little bit of that pattern showing, but I don't want to obliterate, you know, I want the, the pattern in the background more than coming through the poppies, which is why I didn't go with any black for contrast. So now I'm looking at my picture on my phone and remaking the composition and making sure that I've got the area whited out underneath all of the poppies. So as you can see, the poppies and the vase are taking up a huge amount of the background, but you do see that texture and the pattern coming through in the corners, and I'm loving that addition. Now here, the color scheme came from the napkin. This is an analogous color scheme. These are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, and they will work. And here I'm gluing it down with the fluid matte medium, which is my preferred way of using of gluing napkin down. If you have gel medium, stick with matte because you don't want the shine, but you can water it down, and that's a little bit more gentle with the napkin. I'm turning the poppies this way and that way get some variation. And the napkin, because I'm collaging the napkin, that adds another level of texture. Figuring out, okay, now where am I going to put the sentiment? Looking through my garden sentiment pack. And then I end up pulling, well, this one I actually had in my stash, my little container of things that I've printed out. This is printed on tissue paper, which is perfect. I don't want to lose any more of that background. So if I had put paper, a sentiment printed on copy paper, that would block off the background. But because it's printed on tissue paper, you can still see the background coming through. And I picked a font here that's dark and bold, and it goes with the dark in the middle of the poppies. This come, that sentiment comes from my BU sentiment pack, which is also available at Minnie's Napkins. And you can go and check and actually see what comes in every single pack. So now I want to bring out the focal image 
and I'm using the floating acrylic technique to shade around the vase and now I'm using the same technique to edge the page. And that black just works so well with the center of the poppies. This is where everything comes together. But edging the page frames the page and the black just all ties together. I was really tempted to add some script to the background, but as there's not a whole lot there, and I over, I tend to use stamping with a script stamp a lot, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna fight that urge and I'm just going to leave it as it is. I developed all this wonderful texture. So now I want to boost up the color of the poppies and I grab my stencil brush here and I dab it in black paint and I'm doing the centers of the poppies to make them a little darker. Now admittedly I should have painted the poppies which is what you're going to see me doing now first before I did that. Now here I am using those same colors that I have in the background mixing them on the palette thinning it with water and painting the poppies. In some cases, this is boosting the color, pretty much keeping the poppy as it was. In some cases, I'm actually changing the color of the poppies. I'm kind of making this my own. I'm using the napkin art as the starting point. And I'm even adding, you know, changing the colors of it and changing even the shape of some of the poppies. That dark, darkest poppy there had that little teardrop on it. I would have cut that off and I actually I go back in and I, I paint it out. I put gesso on there and paint it out because I just didn't like how it was looking. It may have fit the napkin art, it just isn't fitting my composition. I'm just coming in this is just a, a very simple round brush and I'm mixing those paints adding a little bit of gesso occasionally and just boosting the colors and making this more of my own and I'm thinking you know I could probably attempt painting my poppies these are not very specific I can use this napkin as inspiration and paint my own poppies, maybe bigger ones or smaller ones. Based on that, adding some gesso gives it a bit of a highlight. You want lighter areas and darker areas. And I'm just playing around till it, it looks like what I like. I am not a formally trained artist. I have learned by doing and I just follow my instincts and the more you do something the better you get at it. Now this is in my art journal and I'm playing with this and often in my art journal I come up with ideas that I I like that I think, oh, this would be lovely on a canvas. If I was putting on this, this on a canvas, I would make this bigger. So there would be more of that lovely background showing. I may have also have put some modeling paste through the stencil to add a more of a textural element. For me, my art journal is where I explore and discover and try new things and come up with great ideas that I can put on a canvas at a different time. So after using the stencil brush on the middle of the poppies again, now I'm splattering with gold, gotta have the bling. And the gold works really well with the warm color scheme that I've chosen. Now I grabbed my char General's Charcoal pencil. This is the medium one and I'm holding it loosely in my hand and I just want to roughly sketch 
around the poppy. I want to bring out some of the petals a little bit more than they are, give them a little more definition, but I don't want to be too precise. And I'm holding the pencil loosely, so I'm it's not perfect. It goes out, I'm basically doing it out of the lines and just adding different petals. And again, this isn't something that's on the original napkin art. So this is making it a little bit more my own. There is no right or wrong. And I do come back and I add another layer. So it's kind of scribbled, whatever. This, this is something that the very first time that I've done this, but it will not be the last because I really like that effect. And then I go back and I'm just adding more scribbly lines, very loose. And this helps because this is highly textured. With the layers of paint and the napkin, you're not going to get a perfect line anyways. Now, this is charcoal. This is not permanent. So if this was on a canvas, I would spray this with a fixative to set the charcoal. I know I'm not adding any more layers. So I'm not adding anything wet on top of this, but if it was, if I was going to varnish this, if it was on a canvas, that's what I do. These colors really do not like the camera. <laughs> Hopefully the pictures at the end are a little truer, but it was very difficult to capture the colors. I wanted a little bit more softness on my edge here, so I'm going around with the charcoal pencil, and that's just tying everything together. I'm heating up the tape that I've marked up, that I put on to keep a straight edge. That just makes sure that you're not pulling off the paper. It's a little trick I found. And there we have our finished page. I absolutely love it. Oh, but are we finished? Some of the tissue paper wasn't exactly as bold as I want, so I'm coming in with my Secura Glaze gel pen and just going over the letters to make them bolder. The gel pen, the Secura Glaze pen is dimensional and it's shiny, so it really adds to this and it's very true black. So now we are finished and let's go through the steps. So I use an Anagolis color scheme and those are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And I love this color combination and I got it directly from the napkin. I'm using the technique of removing paint through a stencil and I use three of my favorite stencils to get some of that pattern into the background. I also use my mark making tool, this sink liner, and I stamped with white gesso or white paint. I applied a wash of white gesso to the whole page and I used a brayer. The purpose of that was to knock that background back a little bit. Then I added some more stencil and pattern in another way, just straight up stenciling using the same colors that I used previously. I used the napkin as my focal image and that's really where I started. But I applied a wash of white gesso. I used the makeup sponge underneath it so that I didn't get the pattern. I adjusted the color of the focal image with a wash of color. Changing the colors, changing the shapes a little bit and making it my own. I used my charcoal pencil, General's charcoal pencil, to get a sketchy line around the poppies, just to add, give them a little bit more definition and add a little bit of that black to the background. I printed my sentiment was on, onto tissue paper so that the background shines through. I edged the page first with the floating acrylic technique and then my charcoal pencil. That gives a softer edge. And I splattered with gold. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Here are the close-ups of the finished page. Check out my affiliate links for any of the products used, if you would like them. And until next time, go get creative.